Hi there. Do you want to hear about the best and worst aspects of your type or find out what your type is? Then stick around because we are going to be talking about what your type looks like when walking in the spirit or in the flesh. Hi, I'm your host, Tyler Zock, author of the Gospel for Enneagram devotional series. And in this video, I'll be exploring how every Enneagram type behaves when walking in the power of the Holy Spirit versus walking in the flesh, that is, relying on your own strength and abilities. So, let's get started. Have you ever felt like you swing back and forth between relying on God's strength and depending solely on your own? Well, you're not alone. Keeping in step with the Spirit takes awareness, it takes humility, and it takes constant dependence on the Lord. Let me just share my own experience to shed some light on this. So, as a type 3, I deeply appreciate the laser focus abilities that God has given me when it comes to projects I'm really passionate about. When I sense God's calling, like, failure is not an option. Like, I pour my heart and soul into making things happen. But here's the catch. When I'm operating in the flesh, criticism can hit me really hard. I become defensive, protecting my you know, successful identity, or I even find myself sulking in shame. Like it's just a real struggle. But walking in the spirit means reorienting my mindset. Right? As the Apostle Paul once wrote in Romans chapter 8, he said, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. So, how does this play out for each Enneagram type? Well, let's explore all nine types, shall we? Uh, we're going to talk about their characteristics and their tendencies when walking in the Spirit or the flesh. And by the way, if you want a nicely formatted PDF of all the lists I'm about to share, along with each type's core motivations, then download my free self-typing guide below. I put a link in the description. So go ahead and grab that now. And let's start now with type one. So type one's core motivations are, th are these. Uh, they fear being bad or imperfect. They desire being morally good and right. They focus on what needs improving and they avoid making mistakes at all costs. When walking in the flesh, ones will become perfectionistic, moralistic, judgmental, opinionated, angry, impatient, strict, critical, overly serious, demanding, and uptight. But here's the good news. When walking in the spirit, they become responsible, persevering, reliable, conscientious, they have high ideals, they're ethical, hardworking, dedicated, thorough, uh, striving for excellence, and super honest. Okay, that's type one. Now let's talk about type two. Type two's core motivations are these. They fear being rejected or useless. They desire to be loved and wanted. Or they want to be lovable. They focus on the needs of others and they avoid their own needs and desires. When walking in the flesh, twos will become possessive, intrusive, smothering, flattering, manipulative, jealous, passive-aggressive, martyr-like, overprotecting, rescuing, and interfering. Whew. I know that was hard to hear, <laughs> type twos. Uh, but here's the good news. When walking in the spirit, type twos will be generous, listening, compassionate, hospitable, sympathetic, unselfish, caring, affirming, supporting, sacrificing, and nurturing. All right, those are type twos. Now let's talk about my type, type three. Here are the core motivations for type three. Uh, they fear failing or being worthless. Uh, they desire to have success and admiration. They focus on their image and their goals and they avoid failure and inefficiency at all costs. When walking in the flesh, we as threes can be image conscious, insensitive, deceptive, defensive, workaholics, uh, cutting corners, overly competitive, 
self-promoting, mechanical, right? Human doings rather than human beings, uh, impatient and shape-shifting, right? Like chameleons. But when we're walking in the spirit, we can become productive, efficient, empowering of others, visionary, focused, hardworking, optimistic, practical, competent, successful, and motivating. Okay, let's talk about type four. Type four's uh, core motivations are these. They fear being flawed or inadequate. Uh, they, de- they have a desire to be unique and special. Uh, they focus on what's missing, right? What's missing uh, from being whole and complete. Uh, they avoid the common and the ordinary. And when they're walking in the flesh, they can become moody, standoffish, overly sensitive, depressive, self-absorbed, up and down emotionally, dramatic, possessive, snobbish, self-pitying, and exaggerating. Okay, but here's the good news for us. When walking in the spirit, you'll be authentic, creative, sensitive, compassionate, nostalgic, intuitive, refined, sincere, involved, aesthetic, and expressive. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about type five. Type five's core motivations are these. They fear being ignorant or invaded. They desire to be capable and competent. Uh, They focus on accumulating knowledge. Uh, They like to be uh, very, very competent. They're usually the smartest ones in the room. They avoid being uninformed and intruded upon by others. When walking in the flesh, they can become withdrawn, reclusive, uncommunicative. I think I got that right. (laughs) Obsessive, uncaring, cheap, heady, antagonistic, self-reliant, cynical, and they avoid commitment. But here's the good news. When walking in the spirit... Fives are curious, insightful, interesting, witty, objective, observant, perceptive, thoughtful, respectful, rational, and knowledgeable. Okay, now let's talk about type sixes. Type sixes core motivations are these. They fear being without support and guidance. They desire safety and security. Uh, They focus on what could go wrong and they avoid uncertainty and vulnerability, right? When walking in the flesh, uh, they become anxious. They assume the worst. They get reactive. They become controlling. Uh, They get overly suspicious. Uh, They're hypervigilant, maybe blaming others, uh, becoming too rigid, uh, indecisive, self-doubting, and catastrophizing. Like the world is, the stars are falling from the sky. But when walking in the spirit, they're much more positive. They're trustworthy, loyal, honorable, responsible, reliable, supportive, practical, protecting, prepared, cooperative, and very, very dedicated. Okay, so let's talk about type sevens. Type sevens core motivations are these. They fear being deprived or trapped in emotional pain or unpleasant circumstances. They desire to be happy and satisfied. Uh, they focus on what's next, okay, always planning for the next thing, and they avoid pain and suffering. Right When walking in the flesh, they become scattered, reckless, naive, impulsive, sac- uh, superficial on the surface, a hedonistic, restless, uh, escapist, unreliable, excessive, and childish. But when walking in the spirit, they become optimistic, enthusiastic, spontaneous, charming, imaginative, versatile, entertaining, creative, uh, appreciative, engaging, and playful. Okay, just a few types left. Let's talk about type eight. Type eight's motivations are these. Uh, They fear being weak or being controlled. Uh, They desire power and protection. They focus on taking charge, and they avoid weakness and vulnerability at all costs. Okay, uh, When walking in the flesh, eights become forceful, excessive, uh, they don't listen to others, 
they get a little intimidating, they become insensitive, uh, domineering, uh, maybe rebellious, uh, confrontational, possessive, threatening, and vengeful. But when walking in the Spirit, eights are a powerful display of being just, merciful, protecting, compassionate, courageous, resilient, direct, self-confident, assertive, influential, and empowering of others. I love that. Okay, let's talk about our last type, type nine. Thank, thank you, nines, for being patient and waiting around. Uh, the type nine motivations are these. They fear being in conflict or uh, overlooked by others. They desire to have peace and harmony. Uh, they focus on the expectations of others. They avoid conflict and discomfort at all costs. Uh, and walking in the flesh for them looks like being indifferent, uh, spaced out, apathetic, passive aggressive, indecisive, procrastinating, unresponsive, detached, appeasing, a bit resigned, and stubborn. But when walking in the spirit, nines become easygoing, humble, receptive, diplomatic, patient, unpretentious, right? What you see is what you get. Uh, they become reassuring, accepting, supportive, they're calming, and they are harmonizing. Okay? Well, we made it. That's a wrap. Now I want to hear from you. Drop a comment below and let me know how you're encouraged after you listen to these lists. And also, where do you feel like you still need to grow? I'd love to know your thoughts and experiences, so please leave a comment uh, for me. I'd love to keep chatting with you about this. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it valuable, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more free content coming up next week. Now, don't leave because I've created a playlist explaining every type in detail so that you can learn more about your type and other people's types and share it with others so that you can feel seen, heard, and known. So click on the video on the screen and I'll see you in the next one.